Hi there guys. In this video I'd like to talk a little bit about the Swiss GP11 cartridge. Uh, you can see the box here labeled as uh, Gewehr Patron 11 which I believe would be basically a uh, rifle cartridge pattern 1911. It's also in uh, French and Italian as well since Switzerland is a trilingual country. Um, the GP11 cartridge goes back quite a number of years and it remains uh, still a current Swiss issue cartridge. I believe they still issue this cartridge for their uh, general, general purpose machine gun, although they no longer use it for their uh, main infantry rifles. Uh, as far as the availability of this cartridge, currently I can buy this from uh, one of the local suppliers here in Canada. It's not cheap. It's uh, $359 for 480 rounds delivered. So that's 75 cents a round, or if you want to think in terms of a 20 round box, that's $15 for 20. Certainly not cheap compared to many of the surplus loadings that people are used to buying, especially for those of you who live in the US where surplus ammunition is considerably cheaper. I'm sure you can get it for less money. Um, having said the fact that it is expensive, uh, it is in fact worth it in my opinion because you are not buying a standard type of load, you are basically buying what amounts to a match type cartridge because the Swiss loaded this with uh, considerable care and uh, it is very consistent high quality ammunition. Uh, as I mentioned it's packaged 480 rounds to the uh, the carton or it's basically a, uh, a coated cardboard carton, very weatherproof and inside that carton there are eight of these uh, battle packs and each of these contains 60 cartridges and these are basically a waxed, almost like a wax paper. Here's one that's been torn open, you can see the consistency of it, it's basically waxed on the on the inside. I would assume a very uh, waterproof type of packaging, probably the kind of thing which would have been ind individually handed out to soldiers uh, as their issue of ammunition or perhaps two of these, I don't know how much the standard battle load would be for a Swiss soldier. So inside that there are six of these 10 round boxes. Most of us are used to seeing ammunition packaged in 20 round boxes, but these are in 10. Kind of a compact little package, very uh, much the size of a, you know, a cartridge pocket. I imagine that was the idea. These could probably be inserted into the web gear. Uh, those of you who are, who are from Switzerland can tell me if I'm right on that or not. They kind of remind me of the old fashioned uh, cigarette packages, the size of them. You can see here that there's a perforated tear on the dotted line type uh, thing going on the side here and there's even arrows so it'll tell you which way to tear it so we're going to open one of these if we can, oh gee, screw that up, there we go. So you pull that tab out and then the label is glued over the front here so we'll just tear that across the line and you open it up that hinges back and you have five rounds up, five rounds down. And this ammunition here, if we can get up really close you can see it. Uh, there are letters on it, DA, I believe that uh, designates the manufacturing facility and the year is the bottom number, 1979 in this case, and the top is the month. So that's what the ammunition looks like out of the box. It's very uh, nice shiny clean looking ammunition. The bullet is a Cupro nickel jacketed bullet. A magnet will stick to that bullet. Uh, it is not steel jacketed. Cupro nickel, uh, nickel is a magnetic uh, metal. It's one of the other magnetic metals other than uh, steel or iron I should say. One of the unusual features of these cartridges is this wax sealant. See that there's a ring of wax all around the junction of the neck and the bullet. And I have a theory on, on as to why that is. Cupro nickel jackets uh, were famous for fouling barrels. Uh, I believe that is probably a solution to the fouling problem. Many, many years ago when Cupro nickel jackets came into uh, fashion in military ammunition, it was popular for match shooters to dip their bullets into uh, STP uh, grease or oil the match shooters would then thereby uh, alleviate the fouling that uh, built up from these bullets and the fouling of course degraded accuracy so they would dip their bullets into STP and that would keep the, the uh, barrel free of that uh, fouling. So the Swiss of course are way ahead of the game on that rather than switching to 
a standard type of gilding metal bullet they've put this little ring of, of wax on here and it's my opinion that that wax is there basically to uh, keep the barrel lubricated slightly to prevent fouling with this Cupro nickel jacketed bullet. Anyway I've pulled apart several rounds of this ammunition and, uh, and weighed the components so I'll show you what the bullet looks like first and there's what the bullet looks like a very very sleek aerodynamic boat tail you can see it's got a cantilever here in the center for the uh, the cartridge case to crimp onto but a very very steep very tapered boat tail and it's lead core and it has a ballistic coefficient I believe it's almost uh, 0.5 or 500 or something like that maybe a little better than that under certain circumstances that's uh, exceedingly high and even to this day it would be uh, quite a high performing uh, bullet as far as the ballistic coefficient would be. Um, I weighed 10 of these bullets in total and uh, of, of the 10 the average weight came out to 174.92 grains and calculating the standard deviation for those 10 bullets the standard deviation was 0.39 of a grain so very very consistent in uh, in weight so that's that's pretty impressive for for surplus type uh, ammunition. I've weighed other surplus bullets pulled from cartridges where the you know there was two grains of variance, two and a half grains of variance between cartridges so these were spot on the money very very consistent. So the next thing we'll have a look at is the powder and got my powder scale uh, pan here and we'll just dump the contents of a cartridge into that so you can see it and there's what the powder looks like. It's a uh, an extruded uh, double base powder with a very small perforation through the center of each grain and that's uh, sort of an IMR style of powder and let's see when I weighed those out they uh, the average for the 10 cartridges which I pulled apart was 49.6 grains um, with a standard deviation of 0 0.12 so that's a, a very, very uniform charge of powder for each of these. So once again, a very high standard of manufacture. So we've had a look at the powder, we've had a look at the bullet, we'll have a look at the cartridge case. And these of course are a brass cartridge case. And we had a look at the head stamp before, but you'll also note that there are three very small uh, indentations right above my fingernail there. You can see one there, one there, and one there and those are crimps to keep the primer in place for use in uh, semi-auto or full auto firearms so the Swiss issued the STG 57 uh, sort of assault rifle, main battle rifle, whatever you want to call it and of course various machine guns over the years to use as cartridge so of course the cartridges were um, loaded so that they could be used in those types of mechanisms that keeps the primer in place to prevent any uh, thing from backing out and they are uh, Burdan primed. They are not a boxer primed case which is kind of unfortunate because it appears to be very high quality brass and unfortunately being Burdan primed it is not easily reloadable. Um, you can get Burdan primers in some places. They are not easily available where I live. Um, at this point in time I'm just going to shoot this stuff and keep the brass around just in case I do come across some Burdan primers. I think it would be worth the effort to reload it if I could find some. I'm just going to keep it in case I find any. There is uh, there is reloadable brass around for this boxer primed so uh, I'm not at a loss for to assemble reloads. Um, I'm going to go get a flashlight here so we can uh, illuminate the inside of the case and I'll show you the inside of the case as well. Okay I'm back with a flashlight and see if we can get some we can get some light inside this cartridge case so we can show you what's what the inside looks like. That's a pretty good that's a pretty good image right there. You can see the two flash holes inside the cartridge case. Sure sign that it is a Burdan primed case. So that's what the unfired case looks like. And here's one that's been fired. Of course you can still see the uh, get the light in there. You can still see the uh, the two holes of the Burdan primer looking up at you. Okay, to wind up this video on uh, my discussion of the GP11 Swiss round, I'd just like to share with you some of the results I got when I chronographed this ammunition out of my K31 rifle. 
and with my chronograph set up 10 feet from the muzzle of the rifle, fired uh, 10 shots with uh, an average velocity of 2588 feet per second, an extreme spread of 62 feet per second over the 10 shots, with the lowest speed shot 2551, and the highest speed shot 2613, and that gave a standard deviation of 21 and a half feet per second. So although the extreme spread is not tiny, um, in fact this ammunition shoots uh, better than it sounds like according to the numbers. Um, had some opportunity to shoot this at 100 yards, 300 yards, and 600 yards, and I hope to share that with you uh, sometime in the future in a video, and I can assure you that the ammunition shoots better than I can see the sights, basically. Um, we got groups which were at 100 yards were about an inch, um, and you know they correspondingly grew a little bit as the distances moved out. Um, the main issue seemed to be my uh, ability to line the sights up uh, precisely. The type of sight that the uh, rifle comes equipped with is not ideal for the bullseye type large targets which we were using at a distance. But anyway, hopefully we'll share some of that with you in a future video. Anyway, I'm going to shut this down, getting a little bit long here, so uh, thanks for watching and we'll talk to you later.